Today on Lone Star Geographic, the mating habits of the Gulf Coast box turtle. The Gulf Coast box turtle is a common name for Tampa and Carolina Major, a long-lived species of turtle whose population is vulnerable due to anthropomorphic changes to their environment as well as their seemingly limited awareness. Identifying the Gulf Coast box turtle is a simple matter. The name comes from the hinge on the shell which allows them to fully retract their head and limbs. Sexual dimorphism is minimal in the species, but males do possess a concave section on their carapace which is a clear indicator of gender. Gulf Coast box turtles can be confused with the ornate box turtle, except that ornate box turtles only have three toes rather than five. Box turtles are opportunistic omnivores who root for food and will eat anything in their path. They are completely indiscriminate in their tastes and will eat their own species as well as anything that is small enough to put in their mouths. They are predated by nearly every carnivorous species in their habitat, Luckily for them, this shell is strong enough to protect them from most predators. Coyotes do find them particularly tasty, however, and will gnaw through their shells. Tampa Carolina is comfortable in the temperate forests, grasslands, and wetlands of the eastern United States. Their habitats include any area where vegetation and water are plentiful. The box turtle's population are in decline everywhere. This is in part due to the destruction of the habitat, but also because the species does not adapt to change. If they are moved from their range, they will travel long distances to return to their original home, even if it no longer exists. Due to the habit of reading, box turtles sometimes encounter fire ants, who will then lay siege to the poor turtle, who shall as no defense to the psychotic little killers who eat them from within. As afterthermic reptiles, they are less active during the hottest part of the day, they are able to enter a hibernation-like state called estivation when it's too hot or cold and when food becomes sparse. Box turtles often have overlapping ranges and when a male encounters a female will attempt to mate. If multiple males happen to encounter the female they may spar but otherwise box turtles tend to ignore one another unless of course they're feeling cannibalistic. Males and females do not perform any kind of pair bond and will often ignore each other after mating is concluded. As you can see here, this male has two females, both of which have closed their shell to him. Courtship begins with the male pursuing the female. He will nudge the margins of a carapace and sometimes bite her. Eventually, if the female is receptive, the male will extend his sex organ from his cloaca and begin intromission. He will mount the female from the rear and rapidly move the first half of his plastron, the lower portion of his carapace, on top of the female. If willing, the female will aid the male by grasping his legs with her own. When successful, Mating can look quite violent and last for up to three hours. This poor chap here, however, has not figured out that he hasn't quite made the goal. When intermission lasts for too long, females have been known to keep moving with the male attached. Mating is one of the few times that turtles actually make any kind of sound. It's a kind of hee. Eee. Occasionally, after completion, a male will fall backwards. If he's unable to ride himself, he will die of starvation. Since box turtles do not actively seek mates, females are able to store sperm for up to four years. Once internal fertilization is complete, the female will wait up to late spring or mid-summer to lay her eggs. These legs incubate for up to 90 days and do not have sex chromosomes. Instead, gender is determined by temperature. Colder temperatures make males, and warmer temperatures produce females. Females do not have any interaction with their offspring, and hatching mortality rate is quite high. Their protective shell does not develop until their second year, when their hinge grows. Their hinge and shell fully harden at seven years, but after reaching maturity, they are quite long-lived, 
up to 40 years in the wild, and possibly as long as 100 years.